sin in the camp and turns a blind eye to it they are in trouble with God oh you're not hearing me church even if it's in your own home you are in trouble with God we have a mandate to guard what belongs to God somebody said guard it come on praise the name of guard it amen the, the leader the angel of the church of Thyatira was allowing everything to come inside everything was coming inside and people of God we may not see we may not see the exact same thing of what is happening here but we see some copies going on now we have to make sure that whatever is not biblical it does not reign in our camp and whatever is scriptural even if it offends it must stand because it's the word of God oh come on somebody praise the name of Jesus amen and we're living a time now it's almost like majority rule so if the majority goes along with it then it have to go somebody said not so praise the name of Jesus if this, this is not politics this is not Republican or Democrats and if you're Jamaican this is not JLP and PMP this is the house of God somebody said the house of God somebody said the house of God and sin cannot take a seat in the house of God and everybody shut up you can't touch me don't touch me where, where you coming with, with that where you come from with that? Don't, 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 don't touch me. Don't, don't, if you see something, no, that dare touch me. We, are, we have a right to touch everything because God put us here and whatever don't belong, we have a right to kick it out. Oh, come on, somebody praise the Lord Jesus. So Thyatira was laid back. They were laid back. They were doing, all, they were doing church. And that's, 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 the, that's the thing church we have to be careful that we're not doing church with, uh, with so much that we're doing church but yet other things are dying we're doing church we, we, we wear our long dresses sisters men we put ourselves together but, 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 but when it comes to the, the, the behind the stage stuff some stuff are being eaten out because we're not opening our eyes especially in 2021 now where now maybe they want us to marry same-sex individuals and maybe they might even try to sue us if we don't do it but we refuse to do it come on somebody I said you come on somebody we refuse to do it we even have brethren in church now it's as if when they come to church now praise God it is as if they want to tell us look pastor uh, my baptism when we baptize it right nobody will touch me or pastor me get the Holy Ghost so nobody touch me but let me tell you something if it don't line up with scripture we're gonna call it down I don't hear the church I said we're gonna call it down because guess what majority rule don't run this Lord Jesus what you formulate in your corner don't run this this thing is a holy spectacle of God it is run with righteousness and holiness and even if I fall short here what the Bible says he said I will remove your candlestick Lord somebody said Lord please don't remove my candlestick you know how many people are sitting in church but God removed their candlestick you know how many people have a position they're called ministers they're called mothers they're called evangelists they're called deacons they're in church operating but God removed the candlestick because one because of one thing you suffer that woman Jezebel you see the thing but you turn your blind eye to it you hear the thing but you keep quiet my God, you saw the thing, but you, you, you said, Chum, you, you, you just act like you didn't see it. God called us. God called his people to take a stand. How many of you are willing to take a stand? Amen. Praise, take a stand. Amen. Praise God. Some in the church may tolerate such false teaching because of indifference. Hear this, not me write it. Personal friendships or fear of confrontation or because of a desire for peace so 
Minister Gordon, let's not touch it because it got, you know, it got cause a uproar. Oh, Jesus. Let, let's not touch it. The church is moving so well. No matter with that. <laughs> huh? Huh? But don't you know, sir, if it's there, the church is not doing well at all. Yes, if it's not there, you, is that you have a sore? So the sore has to be dealt with. Sometimes, praise God, I've heard times where somebody may get something on their skin. Amen. It's there. You don't want to touch it, but the, the doctor said, look, I got to burst it open. I got to cut it open. Because if I don't do it, praise God, you're going to have a problem. So you may say, no, doctor, leave it alone. But it has to be cut open. Every, everything that is cancerous or tumorous to the church must come down. Somebody say, must come down. And even if you might lose friends, Somebody said, that's all right. And even if they don't talk to you as they used to, or don't greet you, you got to stand up for what is right. Diathera refused to stand up for the thing that was right because of different scenarios. They were comfortable just praising God. But God don't want praises all only. He wants order. Somebody said order. Amen. God wants order. Come on, somebody praise the name of Jesus. Amen. God says he will judge such leaders and punish all those who sin in these ways and do not repent. Praise God. Praise God. As a pastor, I'm trembling. And as people of God, we should tremble. Because anyhow we call into ministry, God is showing us these things because guess what? God is coming back for a church. Come on, somebody praise the Lord Jesus. God is coming back for a church. And look, look, God is speaking to the church now. You hear what I'm saying? God is talking to the church now. There's not, there's not going to be a sit down later on where God is going to say, house of prayer, sit down here, let me talk to you. God is talking now. When God comes, it's a day of reckoning. It's a day of judgment. It's a day of reward. It's either you get a good reward or you get a bad reward. So God is talking right now. He's talking to me. He's talking to you. He's talking to everyone. Pray God, make sure you do not sit in the house of God and allow that spirit, Jezebel, to act inappropriately and we cock our mouth we worship on top of it we sing and we preach over it no 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 call it down right away and even if you lose a friend lose one for Jesus come on somebody praise the name of Jesus somebody praise the name of Jesus somebody praise the name of Jesus you know it's a sad thing when you have individuals around you who say they're in their officers you know ministers can I talk to and they don't and because normally when you have police officers or soldiers out there when they walk out there they want to know that if I don't see something you see it you don't hear me so if I'm walking and my back is turned but you see something it's your duty to take your gun out and shoot but there's a problem when I don't see it but you see it but when you take out your gun you're shaking you don't know whether you should shoot or not to shoot you don't know if you should act or not to act that means if i'm walking with you and if we're walking together as ministries praise god we should have each other back Come on, somebody praise the Lord. Somebody, I, I should not be a self, I, I should never be at the point where I said, and trust, look, I, I love them, but I can't really trust because guess what? I know, sir, I know compromising gonna happen. You know how many people in church are compromised because of a Christmas gift? No, no, let's talk. Let's talk. They, they compromise because of somebody say somebody greased their palm, they put a little twenty dollar in their palm. Or maybe they compromise over a dinner. Somebody cook some food and give you. So all when that person sin now, it no matter what they do. Talk to me, talk to me. It don't matter what they do. You cannot talk to them because 
this person gave me dinner. Come on, talk to me, church. I, I'm, I'm talking the truth. Oh, oh, this person gave me a nice gift, man. Uh, Christmas is nearby, man. Or, or I got or Father's Day coming up. I want my rose. Hmm? Come on, talk to me. Wheel you in. Try to try to suck you in. Wheel you in. Come. So that means to so look. When you when you see me do something, just just go on. Because me and your role good. Because you help me, me help you. Somebody said that don't work in the house of God. Lord Jesus, come on, church, talk to me, man. I say, if anybody do that, you're in trouble with God. Hallelujah. Who hire you? Church, talk to me. Who hire you? Tell me who hire you. Jesus. That means you have you have a you have one man to answer to, and his name is what? Jesus. Jesus may put me as a pastor and you're working with me, but you have to answer to him at the last day. So that means whatever Jesus says for you to do, what happens? You got to do it. Come on, somebody praise the Lord Jesus. Somebody praise the Lord Jesus. Somebody praise the Lord. That's what that's what happened in the Bible too. Praise God. It happened somewhere in the Bible. The compromising. A matter of fact, it was with Balaam and Balak. Come on, talk to me, church. Let's talk scriptures here. Come on, I want to. I'm going to pay you, man. Curse these people for me. Curse them for me. Some people in church have to be careful of them. You know? they, have, they have a subtle spirit. Can we talk tonight? Some people are not ruled by the Holy Ghost. The devil's using some people right in the body, right in the church. Minister, you're steadfast. Can I talk to you? And they see you standing up. They want to take you down. Because guess what? They don't want you to stand up. They want somebody who will side, side, rub, rub. And when you see wrong, your mouth shut. As I heard, I mean, some people, I, I, I may see on a television show sometime when, when some thieves want to rob some places, they, they, you know, they, they give the dog something nice to eat. Amen, sardine. Some of them cook up some type of stuff, put some maybe marijuana in it, so when the dog, uh, <laughs> dog one <want> baba, oh, <laughs> my yawn. Dog can't bark again because guess what? The thief gave him something to eat. Praise God. I heard praise God of, of, of chickens in Jamaica. What they do? They, uh, they, they burn sulfur. Knock out all the chicken them. <laughs> Knock them out. All the chicken them asleep. None can cool. That's how some people are in the house of God. They have a spirit inside of them that will suck the they will suck you out. Come on, somebody talk to me. They will suck you out. They see you standing, Missionary Garden, and they don't like. They say, no man, you, why, why should I stand so? Let, let's talk, church. Let me hear why, why you stand up like that. I mean, come on, you, you, I want you chatty chatty like me. I want you gossip like me. I want you carry go bring come like me. But tell somebody no. Come on, somebody say no in the name of Jesus. We cannot compromise. And we refuse to compromise even if uh, you want to stand up by yourself. Even if you don't have no friend. How many of you, how many of you in here can manage all that without a friend? Oh, Jesus. No, no, no raise your hand too quick. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. How many of you born without how many of you born without a friend? Which one are you born? You and your friend come out of your womb. Who are you? Or how many of you were born by yourself? You want come out of that womb. And when you when when, when the God have it that you pass, you want going. When you're going to your trouble, guess what? You alone have got you it. As much as I have my wife and children, minister, there were times I was going through some stuff. Even though my wife lied on right beside me, it was me and Jesus. I don't know if you had that experience. Yeah, yeah, you, yes, you, you, you love brother of God. You, you, yes, man. Nothing wrong with the marriage. The marriage is sweet. But there are certain things are just you and Jesus. How come I shall die? Oh, glory to God. 
so that tells us praise God that there's only one man for you to answer to and it's God therefore we have a job to do somebody praise the Lord Jesus oh praise the name of Jesus oh God help us Lord help us Lord who was Jezebel she was the daughter of Etbel king of Sidon and the wife of Ahab king of Israel Jezebel now we have to be very careful we have to be very careful let me talk to myself as a pastor. Let me talk to us as uh, saints of God. Jezebel promoted the worship of false gods in Israel. Harassed and killed God's prophets. And arranged for an innocent man to be falsely charged and executed. King Ahab who did more evil in the eyes of the Lord than any king of Israel before him. He was married to Jezebel, making her the queen over Israel. We learn in 1 Kings chapter 16 verse 31, Jezebel was the daughter of Etbel, who was the king of Sidonians or the Phoenicians. Before becoming king, Etbel was noted to have been a priest of Astarte, which was the Greek form of the moon goddess. Praise the name of Jesus. So here comes a woman married into Israel and all of a sudden become a terror to Israel. We have to be careful as a church. Let me talk to us. What we accept in house of prayer. Yes. Come on somebody. And you have to be careful what you accept in your soul. Somebody said, God what you have. Oh God I feel this. Somebody said, God what you have. Don't accept any and any, any message in your soul. No, Don't accept any and anything in your soul. Guard it. Because here this, this woman, she was connected to Israel by marriage. It's maybe seem, seem innocent, but her background is serving idols, other gods. And she brought it into Israel. My God, the Bible said how many prophets were hiding because of her. It, it took one, one Elijah to, to stand up against the prophets of Baal. When, when Elijah stood up and when, the, when our God answered by fire, my God, she, she sent him a threat. And it was enough to make the man of God run. That God had to ask him, what are you doing here? people of God oh, Jesus somebody said give me strength Lord somebody says give me strength Lord I want to make sure praise God as a pastor we're not going to accept anything and anything because some things you accept it it become a terror it will, it will become a cancer it looks so innocent that, that, that's why that's why I don't want to go too far but that's why I make up in my mind you know we, we want to do things the Bible way and, and, and we have to understand that spirits, spirits rule over people. People don't, people don't just walk around by themselves. Every person, there's a spirit attached to them. Yeah. Everything. Everything. That God fills us with the Holy Ghost. So that means the Holy Spirit attached to us should be what? The Holy Ghost. Somebody say thank God for the Holy Ghost. Before we were filled with the Holy Ghost, oh God. How many of you remember when you didn't have the Holy Ghost? How bad you was? I mean, I go look. Come on, raise your hand. Jesus, have mercy. Bad. Woo we were bad. Lord, we can't even testify some stuff. Mm, Lord Jesus, if we testify, Lord God, you hide them. <laughs> if we watch, we hide. My God, because some stuff was so bad. But thank God for the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody thank God for the Holy Ghost. That erase your past, erase your mistakes. He made some stuff new. Pray that every man is governed by a spirit. So we have to understand that even when we accept people in the church, we have to make sure we bind some stuff first. Oh, you're not talking to me. Praise God. We, we, we can't just come and put them on choir right away. Oh, Lord God, you're not talking to me tonight. Tonight is a bad night, man. You can't just come and put them on the keyboard right away, brother. We can't. I can't just come and put them on the usher board right away. We got to bind the spirit first. Yes. Even when they backslide, before they come, you got to bind some stuff. Because guess what? 
The Bible says, when an unclean spirit has come out of a man, when he, when he find it, it's swept and garnished, guess what happened? It brings seven more. Somebody says seven more. What? More wicked than himself. And the Bible says the last state of that man is worse than the world. The first. The church said we got to bind it up. That's why we have to keep our eyes open. Hakama Shatai. Hello, Mama Sir. When they come in, we got to we got work to do. We got to bind some stuff because we don't want to accept cancer in the in the camp. So Ahab accepted Jezebel in the camp and she was a terror to the house of Israel and not only that spirit rule in the church of Thyatira it wasn't it wasn't Jezebel herself you know the spirit do you know that the spirits are still around the spirit of Judas is still around come on you're not talking to me the spirit of doubtful Thomas is still around we got to bind them somebody said bind them somebody said bind them somebody said bind them and that's why I said to myself and this is maybe off topic I said to myself if somebody leaves the church and they they have a they have a they may have a habit of you know doing something when they come we got to bind that spirit first before we accept them because sometimes you know as a pastor there's some people in the congregation they want you to gladly accept them right away pastor yeah man make you sing pastor <laughs> make you preach pastor no we got to bind those stuff first before you can get back into a position bind those stuff first oh come on somebody praise the lord come on somebody praise the lord amen if you know it's right praise the lord praise the name of jesus praise god amen jezebel let, 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 me, let me tell you how bad it was jezebel persuaded her husband to promote the worship of deities Baal and Asherah among the people of Israel. It was common during this era of kingdoms for the king to establish worship facilities for foreign wives. In this case, Jezebel required the installation of a temple and an altar for Baal, which was built in Samaria. Since she was Phoenician, Jezebel more than likely had a role that was more active than what was normal in Hebrew rule. Come on, somebody praise the Lord Jesus. You see how some stuff can become a terror? The Bible said, a little leaving. The whole lump. That's why, that's why, that's why, I, 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 I'm sorry, I'm trying to leave fire to you, but I, I, please forgive me. That's why, praise God, when we see some things, we, we got to stomp on it right away. We got to stomp on it right away. Uh, I don't care who don't like me, I'm going to stomp on it right away. Oh, you, 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 I don't care who don't want to greet me. Hello, don't be ashamed. Spirit missionary, don't be ashamed if they don't want to greet you. Stomp it down right away. Because who? God is depending on you. Song said, dare to be a Daniel. Dare to stand alone. Oh God, that's why you have to look. Anybody who's anointed, you're going to be alone. Oh God, you don't hear that one. Anybody who's anointed, you're going to be alone. There are days I like to be. Sometimes we love to sing this song, but we don't know an inch of the song that we're singing. Because the minute you don't have any friends, your mind go cuckoo. The start ball. Lord, nobody don't love me. Looking for a friend. Looking for, looking for a connection. The Bible says fellowship. Somebody said fellowship. fellowship. Tell somebody you, you don't need a best friend. Tell somebody you don't need a best friend. You need Jesus. When you're in the house of God, you don't need a best friend. Any minister or any pastor or a best friend, you're in trouble. Lord Jesus. Uh, if I am the pastor here and I have a best friend, I'm in trouble. Because that means anything that best friend do. I cannot, you, you know how many preachers cannot touch best friend? The Holy Ghost telling them to touch certain things and they, 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 they switch the message. 
because they know if they speak that the best friend and them will no more be in communication but when you touch oh lord jesus oh god anybody willing to serve god and for him and him alone so, so lord i surrender all uh, i'm gonna close i can't leave fire tira but it's so much for us to learn that if we allow some stuff to come in it will eat it will be as a ruler a ruler yes cause problem and, and, and I love this part. Yes, when we step on it, sometimes it's gonna be a little uproar because people who are comfortable don't want you to step on it. <laughs> Can I talk? What is right? Somebody says, stand up for what is right. Come on, you don't hear me, you don't hear me, you don't hear me. Somebody says, stand up for what is right. Look, look, it doesn't matter what God called you to do, whatever position you have, stand up. Stand up. There's a blessing for those individuals who know how to stand up for what is right. There's a blessings for it. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Somebody praise the Lord. I'm going to stop here. Amen. Sardis was a seemingly active church. We're dealing with the church of Sardis. Full of good works. The city of Sardis was also a city of wealth. Known for the carpet industry and for minting coins. However, the wealth and good works of this church meant nothing because the church was spiritually dead. Somebody says spiritually dead. They epitomized a church that seemed good, but many had cold hearts, shatai, toward the Lord. They most likely put their faith in their works, prideful and assuming they were saved or in a good standing with the Lord. The message is wake up. Somebody say wake up. And strengthen what remains and is about to die for I have not found your works complete in the sight of God. My God Almighty. Somebody say wake up. Somebody say wake up. So here is Sardis, a rich city, a church that is, is, is looking good. A church that has everything. It looks good. But they were spiritually dead. It's, it's like somebody who's walking up and down. You, it's like you see a, a guy out there who lifts weights and it, he has ever all the muscles. But when he goes to the doctor, he hears that he's sick. It's like a car that shines, looks good. I remember, I remember one time I saw a car <laughs> you're laughing I went to New Jersey my wife and I I said I saw this nice vehicle I said man I'm gonna get it my wife is always having a problem with me when it comes to cars because I always want a car <laughs> and I went to get the car I went to, she, she went with me it was a nice two-door coupe BMW cream color and I said man yes man I gotta get this and I went and I saw the car I said yes so I noticed that they had the car there, but they didn't take it out yet. And the car's looking lovely. Dropped to the ground, everything tinted windows. I said, yes, man, this is, I'm going to the Bronx with this car. They took out the car and I went inside. And when I went inside, it smelled like cigarette. I said, what is this? I said, okay, maybe they're going to clean it up for me. Maybe they're going to, you know, shampoo it when they're done. It's not, the deal is not finalized. So it's, it's, it's in New Jersey. And for those of you who know New Jersey well, it's not like Brooklyn. As soon as you, some of the car marts are right on the highway. So as soon as you come out, you enter the highway. So I saw cars zooming down, zooming down. So I said, all right, now it's time for me to test out this coupe now, man. Brethren, when I press the gas, it's as if the car was asking me, you mean no? <laughs> I just hear, Vroom! and I'm writing the same. I said, what is this? The guy said, oh, the transmission needs a little work. I said, a little work. The car did not move 4.5 miles yet. The engine was on a height. I just take my time and ride around and just ask him uh, for the next day to come back. It looked good. When I saw the picture, the car was shining. 
by itself just just look it's like take me now but when i went to get the car it was uh, not right now it was a whole different story and that's how it is artists they look good they had the choir they had the musicians they had the praise and worship team they were doing convocations they were doing anniversaries but the bible said they were spiritually dead oh god almighty do you know what it is to do everything to go with the rituals the religion the the, the protocols but god is not in it that was sardis they were going just according to protocol but god was not in it it says praise god i uh, just end it. it says in this verse jesus commands the church at sardis to wake up it had fallen into a slumber in which it supposed everything was fine it took for granted that it could go on indefinitely without changing its attitude a lot of people in church save long time but no growth no, don't tell me don't tell them some message so save long time elders missionaries ministers when you hear them i'm in this thing 40 odd years 60 years a statue of stone no change no 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 remorse no 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 oh my god somebody i used to hear bishop say when last you cry i used to hear some bishop say when last you ball when last i want to just pour out of you and you're just repentant it took for granted that it could go on indefinitely without changing its attitude it soon it assumed it could live on its reputation you know how many people are in church living on their reputation i am pastor brown i'm pastor brown and for years i'm pastor brown and because i'm pastor brown you must assume that I am at the place or I am at Jesus' feet. But it's a whole new ball game. Somebody said, you're far, far away. Far from the commonwealth. Of you're far. Just as the city in years past had thought it was immune to attack, but had a disastrous fall, complacency was the church subtle enemy Be brethren be careful when you are among individuals who don't want to grow that's why as a pastor i'm pushing for growth anybody who wants chat make them go ahead i'm pushing for growth i'm pushing for results oh you're not hearing me clap your hand and praise the lord i'm pushing for it and you know what god will give you the desire of your heart the bible says shall not one chase a what a thousand and two put what ten thousand to flight i refuse to be complacent every month i would love somebody to be baptized in jesus name oh come on somebody to receive the holy ghost speak with new tongues the other day i was checking my book as my wife got a dream and i was checking the book and i, I and i checked with 2019 we baptized 19 people 2020 we baptized 2021 i think it's about five people so far we're pushing for increase we refuse to be complacent we refuse to stick with our titles and just warm the benches and just come to a church and may and have a puppet show and go home i don't know how some pastors do it i don't know i was asking my wife i, I don't know how they do it just to just to you know god put you in to do something and you, you know it's like he give you a job but you're not making a stride you're not trying anything god give you to do you must try to do your best somebody say your best somebody say your best it lulls church members into a satisfaction with the way things are so some people love to see things to go on as it was before they don't want to see change they are afraid of change they want the they want the same pang pang on the guitar they don't want no diminished cards they want the few little scenes fit us be in the house of god and we we stick together come out of here man not in here 
And when they see new faces, they're intimidated. Why well, you not talk to me? When they see new ministers, uh, Lord God, Pastor got call on him more than me now. When they see missionaries coming up and, and doing better than they were, all of a sudden, a bad eye now, a cold shoulder now. Come on, you're not talking to me. People in church have the wrong spirit. They don't want to see growth. They want to see complacency. They love to see when somebody leave the church. Lord, you're not saying amen. They love to hear when somebody not happy. Come on, they want bad news. And even if we're doing good, they talk about the good in a negative way. You could have evangelized look more. You could have preached look more. Yes, we are going to evangelize. Even when you're dead, God, we are going to evangelize. We are get bad in here tonight. We're not stopping what we're doing. Tell somebody we're not stopping what we're doing. Nehemiah says, look, I'm doing a good work. Lord, your church, talk to me. And I'm what? I'm not coming down. A complacent church often speaks of its past successes. Come on, talk to me. So, my God, you remember the glory last year? Lord God, what, what, a, what a disgrace to be in a church that is talking about past successes. And what about now? How come I know that I? Show me now! And every time Jesus walked on earth, there was something new every day. Hello, my Shanda. Come on, somebody talk to me. That's why I love this church, man. Every Sunday is a new glory. Lord Jesus, somebody talk to me and give God praise. Every Sunday, there's a new glory.